Okay, <clears throat> so you're a flat earther. Now, when you first realized that the earth was flat and that NASA has to be lying, and when you wash away all the propaganda that you've been fed your entire life, and you step outside and you see heaven above and earth below, just as it says in Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. You should know that the Bible is true. So my question for you, if you are a flat earther and you reject the Bible, can you explain for me, your views on creation and uh, the state of the world and the future, <clears throat> right? So, um, if you're rejecting the Bible, uh, y you know, it would be helpful. I mean, I, I would think you would have to try to somehow in your mind explain the past, present, and future. And like you have with evolution, as dumb as it is, it's still a worldview that explains things. All right, so if you reject evolution and you reject the Bible, then you're going to have to come up with your own theory, if you will. And so I'd be interested to hear it. Now, um, let's say you do believe in flat earth and you believe in the Bible this is this gets interesting because um, the Bible warns us about many false prophets false teachers and uh, we see that more evident today than ever before and so my question for you would be what is the gospel of Jesus Christ what must I do to be saved and you know there's a lot of uh, false false uh, teachers out there and so uh, I I want to kind of touch base on this a little bit here real simply because uh, let's go let's go to one verse here um, about Eve and the serpent. Of course, if you know your Bible, you know about Genesis 3, but here in 2 Corinthians 11, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And so uh, the gospel is real simple. It's real easy. Uh, it's preached over and over in the Bible, and um, there shouldn't be any mistake about it. But people don't want to don't want to believe it, and it's incredible. Really, it's phenomenal. But uh, like in Genesis, uh, I'm sorry, in John three, uh, the, I think the most famous verse in the world is John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that means if you believe in Jesus, you're never going to die. You're going to have everlasting life. All right, and so I, I like to um, uh, preach this uh, here in John 3, the conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus when Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says, How can this be? How can a man be born when he's old? Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. 
So we got a very clear picture being painted here, if you will, that uh, the flesh, we're all born of the flesh, but we're not all born of the Spirit of God. And so when we are born of God, when we are saved, we are born of God, we are born of the Spirit of God, and that Spirit of God dwells in us, and there is a seal put on us, okay? And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are sealed, whereby ye are sealed, we that believe, unto the day of redemption. So there's a seal that cannot be broken, not by God, not by you. And uh, so it's pretty, I mean, it makes sense, right? Because if you have everlasting life, then, uh, then it wouldn't be everlasting life if there was not a seal, right? And uh, let's see. Here in 1 John 5, verse 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God, and that ye may know that ye have eternal life. So you should know it, right? Jesus is the Prince of Peace, right? And so he wants you to know that you have eternal life. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Right? So, once uh, you're born of the Spirit of God, you're sealed and you're free. You're no longer under the bondage of sin, no longer under the law. All right, so the law is there to bring us to Christ, but once we are uh, in Christ, we are no longer under the law. And of course, there are uh, a, a whole lot of people out there trying to put you back under the law. And I'm afraid that those people you just can't reach. Okay, so we got to separate ourselves from the unbelievers, and we have the authority of God, and God loves us, and he knows exactly who we are, and all we have to do is to stand our ground, right? So, um, I just wanted to point this out, make it real simple, that salvation is is by faith, right? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, um, if you like read uh, uh, Hebrews 11, it tells you that it's always been about faith. And um, in, um, so I'll do another video and uh, sort of, do this little dividing of uh, who's saved and who's not. And how do you know uh, what's true and what's not true? And you can't tell, in my opinion, who's saved and who's not. Because there could be new Christians or young Christians who believe the wrong things. And believe me, when I was the first a Christian... I had a lot of stuff wrong. That's just life, right? So the more you trust in God, the more you read the Bible, the more you grow and the more you understand. All right, and that's the Holy Spirit leading you. And uh, so all we need to do is believe in Jesus Christ. And he's done it all for us, okay? He's done it all for us. And we put our faith in trust and hope in him.